Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I am honored to have Coach Mike Dunlap with us from LMU to talk a little bit about fundamentals. And we just were part of the George Raveling Coaching for Success Academy. And it's a fantastic thing that we saw from you. You, you mentioned how you like your players to catch off the hop. And I'd like to you to elaborate a little bit more why you feel that's beneficial. Well, I just think that from a foundational standpoint, uh, you can work to the stride pivot. I'm not against that at all, but it gives you a greater base. Also, is that as the games, uh, you get into the heavy artillery, so to speak, uh, officials have a tendency to go to a place with the stride pivot uh, that the jump stop will take care of and it'll clean up some of those bad whistles on the road. Uh, but again, I'm not opposed to the stride pivot, but I just think the first and foremost, the step hop is, is key. And also getting through a gap or a seam, the ability to jump stop as opposed to stride pivot, you can go three, four feet further off of the step and the hop through a gap zone attack, for example. So I think the key here is with the negative step that you might get out of a 1-2, that might get the refs confused and start thinking that they're traveling when they're doing their shot fakes. Is that what, is that what we're getting yeah, at? Yeah, and a lot of times what happens with the stride pivot, it, you know, the, the players will cheat it and they won't get as low um, because the wider the feet, the lower the rear. Uh, you know, the, all of those things, center gravity, it's a lot of technical things, but without getting too technical is I think that the greatest reason for the step hop is to make sure when you go on the road you're not getting travels. Plus, I do also think that it allows you when you hop that you have both pivot feet at your disposal. So I think that's very important too. Now, how concerned, I think it's safe to say that you are, you sort of attack the game from the top down as a way that you want to appeal to the intellect and in the, in the way the rational thinking of the game goes. Are you worried that that gets in the way of the instinctual parts of the game? No, because I think it's really hard for a player, like you're pointing out perhaps, in the first third of when they come into our program, say the season, but where it vectors is one good decision leads to six good decisions. And so whatever we're doing to capture the mind, the body shall follow kind of deal is that um, you can be simplistic, uh, overly so, and the next thing you know, you're playing against the big boy, so to speak, and that simplicity will get in your way. Just because something's tough doesn't mean that we can't appeal to a person's intellect. Plus, I think a lot of times it should be three to one instead of, you know, one to three, mental to physical versus physical to mental. Um, and who would you say, where did you get that influence from? Where was the, who's that coach? The greatest influencer on me were, were coaches that, you know, don't have names. And it started when I was a kid. Uh, but um, Ed Gorgian was a special coach and, and had a special relationship with John Wooden. But the, the one who had the greatest influence without question is the Newell family. Pete Sr. and his whole family have been in my life and been very much uh, uh, have influenced me. Um, let's look forward to your season. Also is, the, but from a professional standpoint, I also have to mention that George Raveling, uh, I've never had a guy who mentored me more about uh, all those things that you just never get taught. He's, he's a renaissance man. Last couple of questions. Uh, you had a bit of a, of a sabbatical Mm -hmm. uh, in between coaching positions. How vital was that to your development as a coach? Uh, it was very beneficial. I, as soon as I uh, was let go by Charlotte, I uh, uh, scheduled for six months to go on this grand tour and watch the greatest coaches in the United States go. And then I went over to Australia and did some work, New Zealand as well. But I was on the move uh, because I knew that I could use that to my benefit. And I was very lucky. Looking forward to LMU season. Um, what should we expect? And, you know, if, if so, we're all watching your team, what, do you, what would you want us to take away the most of when we, after that game's over? We're going to say something about your team. Uh, one thing, that we pressure the rim when we play offensively and that we pressure the ball when we play defensively. And that's just the way we're going to play. And it, at times we'll give up some easy baskets because of that. But I think that the general fan, it, it, what's appealing to them is an up-tempo game. And, uh, but we think that Temple starts with defense. And any other predictions that you have for the success of your season? None uh, whatsoever. I just want uh, a better quality of practice. And I also want to get a couple upsets where people said, well, they're the underdogs. And, and I think eventually you have to get some of that done in order to turn your program around. Well, truly uh, fantastic stuff. Thank you for taking the time with us. And don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You in? You win, Coach? Absolutely.